What's good, everyone? This is Deb the Coolest. And this is JB. And welcome to Hashtag Slick Talk. Hey, it lit, it lit, it lit. Where the hashtag? Where the hashtag? It lit, it lit. <laughs> What's welcome going back. on? Yes, welcome back, y'all, to another episode of Hashtag Slick Talk. We're happy to see you all again um, or, you know, talk to you again. If you're listening on another po- or another platform that's not YouTube, um, taking care of yourselves. We're, we thought a lot of people thought 2020 was just the end of it, but we're still, you know, life is still going and COVID is still alive and real. So I hope you're, everyone's taking care of themselves. What are we talking about? Unless you have something you want to say to the listeners, what are we talking oh, no, about? That's it. You know, it's a new year, still feeling kind of 2020 ish. Yes. But, uh, you know, we're here, like we said, you know, the last episode and we're excited to be back and we got a great topic to discuss today and I'm excited to be here, you know? Yes. Well, you going to start it. Oh, <laughs> I got to start it. Okay. So we're today we're talking about belief systems, right? So we're going to give you guys like a couple of segments. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about some of the conspiracy theories that have been thrown out there over time and throughout history and some that we know we have personal thoughts on. And then we're going to take it over to certain belief systems that each one of us, you know, believe or we don't believe in or anything like that. So um, let's start it off with by saying the first one that comes to mind is 9-11. As far as conspiracy theory. As far as conspiracy theories. So there's a lot of people that believe that 9-11 was pretty much a a setup and staged and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I'm one of those people that I don't know if I feel like it was a setup or staged. I feel like that there was some something like they worked together because things that built built up to that day, like the fire drills that they had leading up to that day, the way that the building fell, you don't forget that was the second time that something happened to the Royal Trade Center. Uh, it got bombed in the early nineties. And, you know, and then just looking at how things fall, like, at the, you know, it's, first of all, it's hard for fuel jet to burn through the material that the building was made out of. And then also the way that it fell, it fell like it was a demolition. And parts of the building was exploding before it even the thing got to it. So I do believe there was some some funny play, some some funny play. But I'm gonna just leave it on because I don't need nobody knocking at my door. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know specifics about it. I mean, I just know from what they pretty much showed us and what they've told mm-hmm. told us. And I try not to be kind of like naive to certain shit like that possibly happening. But mm-hmm. I have heard of like the way the building fell and, you know, um, like that it was attacked for the second time and everything. So I have heard of those things. I think mostly what I was focused on in the past when I have when all these things were talked about was mm-hmm. that like it was literally something that. Well, I guess it can and it can coincide and, 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 you know, relate to each other. But it was mm-hmm. something that essentially like the government or like the president um specifically put in place and like kind of like put together because he's wanted to go to war you know and he, you right know, get money and stuff like that. I, don't, I don't know too much about it and I, um like in our pre-meeting like i said before i'm not too much of a conspiracy theorist like i don't think i don't you know i know there are things that go on that the general public doesn't know about um but i don't know i don't know too much about them you know but um yeah and it's because that- i'm like in these type of situations, will we ever know, you know, where there exactly. ever be, you know, some information? Right. And that's why they're conspiracy theories, because we would never actually know the truth of it, you know. Yeah. Um, before we move on from the 9-11, while I'm, I'm also not a huge conspiracy theorist, like I, some things make me raise an eyebrow, but I'm not a huge conspiracy theorist. But what I will say with regard to 9-11 is check out that Zeitgeist uh, video. It's, I believe it's still on YouTube. There's a video, Zeitgeist 9-11, and it'll make you think a little bit, you know. So right, like, bro. Yes, for sure. Amongst other things. They have other stuff too, but that one in particular is like, hmm. Mm-hmm. But um also some things that the government may be hiding from us, what, Area 51? Yes. <laughs> Aliens. Do you think that that's real? Uh, um, I don't think I'm not really too big on the I don't believe that there's aliens. I'm just gonna put that out. Okay. There. There are people that truly believe that there's extraterrestrial like uh, beings. Well, I wanna, do you do you not believe that aliens 
came to Earth or that there is no other life form in the whole universe at all? I don't believe that there's other life form. Um, I believe that- I do. Yeah, I believe that there's like possibly like animals. What other life forms? Well, I mean, kind of like, (laughs) but like animals that we know are animals that are kind of like a different replica of like animals that we have out here but not necessarily like aliens. Like when I think about aliens, I think aliens that can communicate amongst each other and that can kind of like, you know, put things together, like, um, I guess, uh, like just put things together to accomplish something, Mm -hmm. like by taking over like a community or coming down here or like, I don't know how to explain it, but just something that is, I guess you could say like intellectual, like Mm -hmm. beings that can can do things that will put, you know, uh, humankind, mankind at risk or whatever the case may be. I don't necessarily believe that, but I do believe that they're like animals or something possibly that are like just transformed to like something to make it look like something different possibly. Right, so I think I think for you, the definition of life form is someone that resembles a human being. Exactly. So that's, in your mind, that's what it is, yes. But I, in, in the scientific community, and I'm not a scientist, but you know, I'm infatuated with space and shit like that. Yeah. Like, um, any life form is something, it can be like a bacterial thing. You know what I'm saying? It can be an organism of like, it can be a a plants. And they consider that an alien? I'm sorry, did you just say? I I don't necessarily, see the word alien itself is kind of like, it has been just put in this box of like the big eyes, green head, you know, like, Mm -hmm. so if we're thinking of like people that are trying to take over earth, I mean, or other, you know, extra, extra, terrestrial or be child I can't even say it extra terrestrial <laughs> beings um out there that's trying to take over earth I don't know but I do believe that there are other lo- life forms somewhere in this huge universe like we can't even concept how large this universe is so I do yeah. think that there's a now if we have something here in America exclusively I don't know. Recently, they said, you know, Obama kind of alluded to it and the CIA released like the black files or something that kind of alluded to uh, uh, life forms. But who knows? said, will we ever truly know? I- <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. But I do believe that they have like a an area 51 that's dedicated to like, you know, stuff that regular people are not supposed to know about, like building different things and you know, holding thing. I, I don't know what they got over there. I mean, it's just, it just makes you like really have to like sit and think possibly like what could else could be going on mm-hmm. that we wouldn't even think about. There's tons of stuff that I think is, is being done behind closed doors right. that we wouldn't even think about right now, even having this conversation. So, but it's possible. Yes, um, yes. And then another one that comes up is the Illuminati, like a conspiracy theory is, theory is the Illuminati. Yeah. What do you think about that? I do believe that there are secret societies, mm-hmm. you know, but the Illuminati specifically or in particular, I, it, it could be there. What I don't believe is that all of these celebrities are a part of it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it could have been established way back when the forefathers, you know, established this country and stuff. And it has, you know, been going ever since, mm-hmm. but I don't believe that every celebrity sells their soul to be, to gain that status by joining the Illuminati. You get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. The thing that's been, that's kind of like the the narrative that hasn't been put out the most when it, mm-hmm. in terms of the Illuminati. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with you in that sense. I definitely feel like there are a few secret societies. I mean, I just feel like once you reach a certain point in life where you are worth like a trillion like <laughs> dollars or like a billion dollars, it's like they, I mean, you have so much power with just that money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like with that power, um, if you, I mean, I just think it's possible to just collaborate with other people that have that right. amount of power to like kind of control different type of narratives in the U.S. or in Absolutely. the world. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's interesting, but I definitely do believe that. I don't necessarily believe, um, you know, specifically the Illuminati and the celebrities joining and everything like that. But you hear that so much. I mean, two of the famous people that were supposedly in it was Jay-Z and Beyonce. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? And I get tired of them, like, I get tired of, like, just Black celebrities or Black artists in general, like, making it to a certain point in their career or in their, mm -hmm. you know, their life and automatically have to be working hand in hand right. with something like this in order to... Like, they can't, they can't make, they can't make, they can't be self-made, make it from right. the bottom. Like, y'all are fans of these people. Clearly, y'all are giving them money to be even more successful. Exactly. Like, make it make sense. Exactly. And it's like, Try to do that to their success is ridiculous. Right. So yeah, well, who knows? But I think, to be honest with you, out of all the conspiracies, mm -hmm. I think that that would probably be the one for me. I think that would probably be the one that would um, possibly show itself if it were to be true, like secret uh, secret societies. I feel like that would probably be the the most likely one to like be like somebody will come out and be yes. like oh yeah. this is what i have and you know i i heard about da, 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 you know yeah so. to come to come to light that'll be like the the you know yeah. this one for sure um and um last but not least before we move on to uh the uh belief systems crack and drugs <laughs> being brought into the black community by the government Whew. By the CIA, apparently there's a conspiracy that the CIA put crack cocaine into black neighborhoods and like what the 80s? and weapons too and weapons, yeah, mm -hmm. in the eighties. And yeah, that's where it really popped off. When it really popped off, I, as a black person, being biased, do believe that that is true. Yes, only because otherwise, how will we have gotten that influx of all of that stuff? Yeah. Like out of nowhere, just getting hella guns, getting hella uh, drugs. We we I, I mean, like I said, in my view, being biased and being in my in my upbringing, I don't know too many black people that are connecting with the cartel out in Latin America to get right. drugs, or at least in that time. Maybe now it's a different story, but at that time, like I just can't see that being a reality. So they had to get it some way. Um. And yeah, and there was a story actually out here in the Bay Area, there's a train track up near Emeryville um, that um, back in the early 80s, they drove th the train through and th like dumped guns out of the train. <laughs> like just oh, dumped wow. them. And people came and got them and they just, you know, here we are. Um, oh, so I that one I'm a little bit more inclined to believe. I mean, just look at what they've done to us with the Tuskegee experiment, with slavery. Like they they don't want us here. So anything that they can do to get us out, self destruction. That's yeah. basically what they wanted. They want to put something out there and so you know have it self destruct, have us go crazy and mm -hmm. you know do things with ourselves. Like I've heard, I've been hearing that for so long. Like I remember my dad. Uh, speaking to me about that theory and um, you know growing up what I countered it with was the the possibility that just white people in general like infiltrated like our neighborhoods and like mm -hmm. brought these things like all it takes when you think about it all it takes is just like one white person to go to the hood and like have like hella access to like cocaine and like or crack cocaine and, and guns and everything and end up meeting one black person and then he's getting hooked on it and then, you know, just kind of like a transition where it, it blooms like that. But mm -hmm. I really don't put anything past our government, hence the yeah. Tuskegee experiment like you were talking about. And yeah. hence also, um, there's another conspiracy about the the AIDS virus, you know, yeah. HIV and AIDS virus that that was also planted, you know, um, in our neighborhood as well. So mm -hmm. I honestly don't put anything past our government. I feel like and I'm not trying to sound like a, a super progressive or anything, but I feel like, or well, I'm not, excuse me, not progressive, but I sound like a super um, uh, conservative, but I feel like the government um, literally has too much power and has had too much power throughout our whole lifetime. And um, with that power, it makes it easy for them to do things that like this, that we're speaking on, and then literally us not know you know, how it started or where it came from or anything like that. So it's just ridiculous that we even have to, like those two things or those three things that we, that fall into the, the black community and everything like that. It's just unfortunate that those things have even happened. And then now yeah. it's unfortunate that we even have to consider that they happen from our own government. 
or in ridiculous that, right we this is not the top but there's so much that we can talk about with regard to the black communities overall distrust with this government yeah if there's just so much that people like i had a conversation and we'll move on about the whole uh getting a vaccine situation and it's like mm-hmm. as a black person no i have distrust in this government because i don't trust what they're inserting into our bodies and they were trying to force us to be the first ones to get the vaccine black people right before uh, first line workers front line workers excuse me like that that kind of just triggers something in my head where i'm like uh uh-uh, i'm not taking that and yeah. you just have to understand like as a black person like no that's yeah. not something historically that historically is it's been tough for us to dr- to trust the government but mm-hmm. at the same time we gotta like believe in it because we live here it's like crazy it's like right. you know uh know. you're asking us to do these certain things but at the same time history has shown that we can't trust you because you yeah. do shit like that so right. yeah okay well let's get into these belief systems um yeah. i'm looking at my phone that's why i keep looking down by the way do you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, take it off. well first what we can do is um we can talk okay. about okay. like huh or explain, go ahead what you were saying. Yeah, explain kind of like the, before we start the process of like asking, I guess, specific questions when it comes to our individual belief systems, mm-hmm. we can kind of like explain like overall specifically um, like what we mean by belief systems, like, you know, the overall kind of like definition to, and what we'll be discussing of belief system. We can start it off right there if you want to. Sure, uh, so a belief system by definition is things that make like a philosophy or a religion or just an overall mentality. So it's things that kind of just like build up so that it becomes a system in some way. Um, Mm -hmm. Like religion, like Christianity, there are a lot of beliefs that make Christianity. There's a lot of beliefs that make certain things a philosophy that like Plato and Socrates and uh, even before them, the ancient Kometans or Egyptians, we call them modern day, um, that they had, you know. Exactly. So those are belief systems that build up to just create a system overall. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah, racism is, uh, uh, <laughs> or racism is a part of a belief system, which is white supremacy. Exactly. So, oh, speak on it, child. <laughs> Listen, and that's deep. So, and that's yeah. still here today. Like, oh, no, absolutely. They're very yeah. relevant today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But yeah, do you want to start it off first with the question or do you want me to go? Sure, or? Yeah. No, yeah. So we're going to bounce just two questions each off of each other, you guys, and um, just answer how we what we believe uh, yeah. as individuals. So I'll read a question. I won't answer it. Just uh, JB will. And JB mm-hmm. will read one to me and I'll answer it and vice versa. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's go. So... Huh, I like this one for you. How much information do you need before you believe something someone says? That's the first question. Mm -hmm. Second question, does it depend on how much you trust that person or how intelligent you think they are? Um, I think it, to be honest with you, I'll answer the second question first. (laughs) It definitely depends on how much I trust that person Mm -hmm. and how intelligent they are. Um, me being a Capricorn, I'm very, <laughs> no lie, like I'm very calculating. Um, and then a, a small part of me, but uh, and obviously I don't believe know everything, but a small part of me was like, I know this. And if I don't know it, I'm going to find it out and I'm going to tell you. So uh, I definitely, if, if somebody, you know, in, in order for me to believe something, I definitely have to trust that person. That mm-hmm. person definitely has to have like a background and receipts, you know, um, when right. it comes to what you anything. Yeah, he he has to have a or he or she has to have a background of receipts and like evidence like that they know exactly what they're talking about in order for me to believe it. So now answering the first question, no, it's not easy for me to believe anything because I just know, especially nowadays, people just be throwing shit out there just to throw shit out there. People love to (laughs) while I'm talking, it's ironic, but people love to hear themselves talk and people (laughs) people love to 
make it seem like they have more information than the other person. So with that, just me knowing that, it's like, yeah, you could truly have the information or you can truly believe in something and trying to get me to believe in what you believe in as well. But based upon the situ based upon the simple fact that I know that a lot of people just want, you know, to get people on their side and to kind of like just make it seem like they know something that they're superior in their thought than the other person, mm -hmm. I immediately have to like second guess and take a step back. Like, wait a minute, yeah. let me do especially, my research, you know? No, yeah, for sure. And especially, and I'm not answering the question, just piggybacking off of what you're saying, like, especially in the world of social media and everyone just putting their opinions out there. Exactly. Not, not, not giving any basis to anything. Just this is, this is what it is. This is true. This is true. This is true. Um, exactly. I feel that. I feel your answer on that. Yeah, exactly. I definitely, I, I guess you could call me a skeptic in that sense. Because I ain't just believe in anything. And that's fine. <laughs> okay, so oh, my that's question. perfect, actually. So my question would be, uh, which is a really, really great one. Uh, should we look after our own well-being or mm -hmm. should we look after each other? <sighs> okay. I'm going to say, this is not a cop-out. I'm going to say both, but I'm going to say why I said both. The reason why I said both is that you have to be able to look for your well-being before you can take care of somebody else. You can't pour into somebody else's cup if your cup is empty. You know what I'm so saying? You answer the question. Huh? So you you answered the question. You looking out for yourself first. Well, first, so what, what, how was the question phrased, though? Should we look after our own well-being or should we look after each other? And that's why I say I feel like both. But yes, first yourself. Yeah. You have to look out for yourself first. So if that's the if that's answering the question, then I yeah. feel like that would be the answer. <laughs> <of> the <question. laughs> but I believe that they can both coexist. Like, but yeah. you have to take care of yourself first in order to take care of other people. Because if Very you are first of all, if you're giving something to somebody that and you don't have it, you're giving them uh, you're making them steal from you basically. Mm -hmm. Like you're giving them permission to steal from you unknowingly or knowingly. Like if you don't have it to give, don't do it. You have to invest in yourself first. And then from there, I do believe that as human beings, just period, we're built to help each other and be around each other. Um, if that's always the case, no, because we look at people like Jeff Bezos and all these billion trillionaires that's not doing anything for communities and helping us out. Hmm. So a follow-up question to that. I'm happy that you brought that up as a follow-up. And this is going off the um, the script, okay? Uh -huh. uh, a follow-up question since you brought that up is, do you believe that it is the responsibility of billionaires and trillionaires to mm -hmm. divvy out and, and give and share their wealth <laughs> with people that are, you know, poor, like homeless people and things like that? Do you believe that if you make it to a trillion dollars that you should be giving out a lot more, you know... Well Yes, absolutely. And not even a trillion dollars. I, my personal belief, I love this. We're talking about belief systems. I personally believe that once you get to a billion dollars, that should be the cap. Because mm. at that point, like, it just makes no sense, like, to have more than a billion dollars. Like, once you get to the threshold or close to the threshold of a billion dollars, maybe give to something so you can be back at 700 million, which is... A lot of money, you know what I'm saying? Like, give 300 million so you have that 300 million buffer to get that money back if that's what you want to do. But I can't give away 300 million, I only have a billion. <laughs> I only have a billion dollars. I'm going to be broke if I only have 700 million. No, but, but for real, like, the thing is, I think with us, um, people that aren't billionaires, we can't conceptualize how much money a billion dollars is. You know what I'm saying? Like we, right. we look at 1 billion. Oh, that's just 1 billion. No, 1 billion is $1 over 999 million, 999,999 dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like that is so much money for what? A common house costs $300,000. A mansion in Atlanta is 600. Yeah. yeah a, a huge mansion is 3 million, maybe yeah. four. 50 million, but 50 million in the, in the grand scheme of a billion is nothing. So I just, I'm going on attention a little bit, but I just do not believe that we should have billionaires. That has to be the cap. 
I just, I, I mean, just, there's so many people out here struggling and yeah. can't make ends meet. So I'm going to push back a little bit on that, though. Okay, please I wouldn't, do. Me, I wouldn't be me if I didn't. So what <laughs> I would say to that is that I, I, I can appreciate that sentiment. And I can appreciate that belief. But I also have to think about if somebody uh, works really, really hard, you know, and like invests a lot of their like whole life with getting to a point where they are able to access all of this money, is it truly fair that there's a cap of their wealth being brought in based upon like, because you have to think about it, if they're capped at a billion dollars, where else, I mean, where else is the other money going to go to? Is it going to, like, is it going to be set up where it can be distributed to other people? Like, just yeah. automatically, like, whatever income they have coming in that's over a billion dollars, or mm -hmm. once their their wealth becomes a billion dollars, like, where is it going to be distributed to when they're still putting in the hard work to make sure they're still getting this money in? So that's yeah. one of the questions I would have. Totally. Uh, that's then, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, and in addition to that, well, to, to your point, still to your point, mm -hmm. I believe personally that they should there should just be mandatory kind of like a giveaway, like a, 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 a what do they call it? Donations. There should be and a lot of, you know, celebrities and people that do this automatically it's like tax write offs and everything like that. But I believe that once you're um, and they're kind of doing this now in government or when Joe Biden said he wants to do this, like with taxing the wealth, like the wealthy. So I believe that once you make a certain amount of money or once you get to a certain, you know, um, uh, uh, status of wealth and a billionaire or trillionaire, that you should be obligated um, and it should be mandatory for you to spread that wealth back. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, not only just uh, if that becomes a tax, I guess that's what you call taxing the wealth. Um, but I think it should be more than just a small tax. And I, I forgot how much Joe Biden said he wants to tax people that make over $500,000, but it should be a substantial an, amount of money. And then that money should be, personally, I know I'm going on a tangent, but then that money should be distributed towards, you know, um, not even middle middle America or like uh, middle class, something like lower poverty, right. homeless people. Like there should be a system set up where they, they receive that money through, tax and it's, it's, it's definitely not that easy obviously but that's what i believe anyway well, that i think what i think what it is is equity you know what i'm saying like i mean to your first point then we can move on from this question i have the next question actually but mm -hmm. to your first point like they could maybe even have the decision of like where they want that extra money to go you know what i'm saying no, like no. they want to distribute it to something if there were a cap on uh, having a certain amount of money. At that point, they can decide. Or like I said, if they're getting close to that cap, they can decide, okay, I'm gonna do this because I know I'm gonna make this much and I wanna buy this. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, absolutely. But, um, but to your latter point, yes, yeah, like for now, I think taxing is going to be the best option. Absolutely. That's like that's, and I was just pissed off that so many people were upset about him raising taxes on people making $500,000 when you're making $13 an hour. What? Exactly. Like, I don't think people. I think people are just. I think people just naturally are against taxing people. Like right. people just don't believe that people should be taxed. But it's just like, listen, if you knew how much money they was bringing and bringing in, like a Jeff Bezos, like right. you know, how much money he's gonna be in. Being him being taxed is not. It's not gonna lose. It's not like he should be. He should be actually, and this goes into our question, initial question. He should be saying, "Yes, tax me. I want to be able to help." Once right. you get to a certain point, that that that's my belief. I know I answered the question I asked you, but I mean that was a great question. I wanted to share my belief with that question. You could do the same thing, by the way. But um, yeah, I believe that well, he should speak up. He's taking care of himself first, right? Yeah. That that just goes back to like he's, he took care of himself first. But now it's about time that you help other people. The fact that you and then one statistic is the fact that like all the billionaires in this uh, in this country in the United States or I guess you could say in the world, I forgot what it was, could literally like have more money than the world population, than the lower bottom of the world population. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's where yeah. the top 1% things come from. Sorry, I mean, over talky, we just oh, talked about doing that, but, <laughs> but that's where the top 1% thing comes from, right? Like the top 1% of people that are making money has more money than the rest of the 99%. That's ridiculous. That like, Okay, let's move on because we can talk on this forever. So, <laughs> right. Okay. I look short. Hey, let's. Have go. you ever changed your mind 
and stop believing something that you once strongly believed in and why? Oh, um, that you once strongly believed in, but stopped. Oh, well, changed that, your mind. That's an interesting question. So, I guess I would say that the first thing that comes to mind, because I feel like there are a couple of things, you mm. know, throughout time that I was really strongly believed in that mm. I was like, eh, um, but I won't touch on those. But what mm. I will go to first is that the belief that. <clears throat> that us as human beings need to work as much as we work. You know what I'm saying? Like 40 hour, uh, 40 hour weeks, like Monday through Friday, like all that. <clears throat> I used to believe <clears throat> growing up, um, once I got to a certain age, mm -hmm. that like you work hard, you go out there, you work, you know, you get money and you pay bills and you have this life and everything like that. And I don't believe that anymore. I truly believe that we only get one life to live yeah. You know, anybody, I can debate somebody on this, but I truly believe that we only get one life to live and I'll be damned if I'm going to be working 40 hour weeks for somebody else, like a Jeff Bezos and making them money while I'm getting $17 an hour. And this Nick, <laughs> this, dude, this dude gets, is a trillionaire and I'm getting $17,000, I mean, excuse me, $17 an hour working 40, 40 hours a week, five days a week, sometimes on Saturday and Sundays. No, that's not that. My belief is that no, people aren't naturally supposed to work like that. Yeah, work hard and everything, but work hard for three days a week. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, there's it's other still, countries. Still, I'm sorry, and still get a livable wage. Exactly. There's mm -hmm. other countries that don't work five days a week or eight hours a day. Like, there's other countries that do that and are able to live freely and everything like that. Like, why are you telling people or why are people having this belief? that you have to work so hard to get this accomplished and get this amount of money in order to be successful. And it's like, you have to think about it and I'll get off my the high horse to stop the tangent. But it's like, you literally, first of all, just put it into perspective of we only get one life. Throughout that one life, we're going to school. We're to eight hours a day. We're going to school to learn, to you know get information so that we can get a successful job and everything like that. First, when we, when we first start kindergarten, taking up our time free time that we could be at home playing or spending time with our family or exploring the world because this world is huge. So we start off at, as in kindergarten doing some shit that we don't want to do that, but are, is mandatory for us to get more educated and more information. But you know, that should be an option. Like you could be homeschooled where they can homeschool you for four hours a day and then you could go oh, and do something else. But the fact that we start off at kindergarten, go all the way to college and go through all this schooling and, taking up all this extra time where we could be experiencing life. We could be having fun. We could be seeing the world. We could be spending more time with our family and friends doing things that actually make us happy. Right after we get out of college, a lot of us end up going into a job. Mm -hmm. That job sometimes is overworking you. Eight hour, 10 hours days, five days a week, six, day, six days a week, all the way until you retire and you retire at 65 years old. And then by the time you're 65 years old, you don't want to do shit but stay at home and do nothing because you've worked up until 65 years old. Yeah. I personally don't believe that that is what life is about. Anybody can anybody could debate me on that, but I'd be damned if I go back to working for someone that's making millions and billions of dollars while I'm slaving until I'm 65 years old. Then finally, when I get to 65 years old, I'm like, oh, let me let me go travel. No, bitch. I'm traveling right now at 34 years old. You got me fucked up. Period. What, but what I will say, and I agree with you. I okay. totally agree with that. Like, there are countries that have four-day work uh, weeks. You know what I'm saying? And people yeah. are still making, they're making more money than a lot of people here in America making yeah. minimum wage. You know what I'm saying? But what I will say that I have to push back slightly on, um, I agree up to a point with the K through 12 education. Like, mm -hmm. I do feel like it is important that, there is a basic understanding and learning. There's a different conversation to be had. What does that look like? Because we didn't learn about how to prepare taxes, how to exactly. do basic things. I will say that. Um, and it also, I do feel like um, with the K through 12 education, while I feel like it should be mandatory, what shouldn't be mandatory or what shouldn't be done is giving kids uh, work during the summer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, give them that time to chill. I'm, I've am i never been big on homework. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like with, teach the kids what they need to learn in school. While I understand, I guess, one side of the argument of the fundamentals of why they're giving kids homework is so that they can keep learning. It's like, well, no, kids need a break. So yeah. after school, teach them what you're going to teach them and go from there, you know, and exactly. come back to it the next day. Yeah. But homeschooling is also still an option too. And that's, if you want to do that for your kids. And that's, yeah. probably, that's honestly, if I was in a position to do that, I honestly would do that because not only, yeah. and then I'll digress, but not only, and ask you the uh, next question, oh, but yeah, not yeah. only do I feel like that brings you closer to your child and you guys build a bond throughout that process, but it also gives you time, it gives you the space to actually teach your child what you believe is going to be relevant in the world. So it's a huge responsibility to play with that and to have to have the idea of like, what do I want? What do I believe is gonna be really important throughout life, you know, that I can teach my child so that they can, you know, be, you know, successful growing up. But I think that that's something good to happen. There's a lot of stuff that I wanted to learn as a child going K through 12 that they didn't teach in school. You know what I'm saying? And that's also, what private schools offer as well. Like with certain private schools, they offer certain type of specific classes and electives and things like that that are specific to what the parent believes the child's needs are. You know what I'm saying? And then with homeschooling specifically, and even some um, private schooling, you're not, you're not mandatory to go to school the whole eight hours. You know, homeschooling, you're, you're, well, I don't know, I can't necessarily speak on that because I've never done that, but I would believe that a mom or a dad is not teaching their child eight hours, you know, throughout the day, or a tutor is not coming in and teaching their child eight hours a day. They're breaking that up. So even if it's four hours, five hours a day, that's still three hours less of a day that you get to spend doing whatever you want to, you want to uh, nurture your passion. We don't have enough time to nurture, nurture our passions and what we're passionate about. We're too busy focusing on, oh, school. We have to go to school and, right. and learn all this it's- bullshit that we won't even talk about or won't even know about or care right. about when we're older instead of actually focusing on you know, what we're really passionate about. That's why I give, and then I, this last thing I say, that's why my hat goes off still to this day to Matthew Knowles because from a very young age, he noticed in Beyonce what she didn't notice in herself. And he literally capitalized off that. He said, we're going to work hard. This is mm-hmm. what you want to do. You're still going to go to school and everything. But he put a lot of focus on her passion, which was entertaining and which was performing. And now look at her, you know? Yeah. There's, well, there's two, well, it's funny that you said cap- he capitalized off of her when we were just talking about the yeah. capitalization that we're living in with these billionaires. <laughs> but yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's ironic. It, so he did capitalize off of Beyonce. But I, I think what you probably more so meant to say was that he honed in on that and fostered, yeah. like he he watered it and helped it grow. Yeah, uh, and also just and then we'll we'll move from this. Is that um, I understand the homeschooling, but everyone doesn't have that luxury. Exactly, uh, and so that's why I feel like mm-hmm. with that, like let kids have their summer. You know, mm-hmm. let kids have their time after school to not have to think about schoolwork if. They can't if they can't get homeschooled because sometimes right. parents have to both parents have to work to survive. But Would you never homeschool your child. Um, I don't know. I'll have to see when I get to that point. I think there are a lot of pros to uh, public schooling, like social socializing and stuff. Um, what I would take on, like you, okay, I want to move on from this, but. <laughs> no, I, I just had that question though. I'm like, no, would you homeschool? So, but but I, think, they, I think the listeners have an idea of what I would want to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, but I'll, okay. I'll be open to the idea of it. Just idea. It that way. I know you're smart enough. So you probably just wouldn't have the patience. I said one plus one. <laughs> It's a lot of patience and just a lot of just being home. You know, there's just a lot of, there's pros and cons to both. Like I said, we can have maybe another episode. Yeah, no, absolutely. You can tell I'm passionate about that when it comes to like living life and everything. I'm really really passionate about it. Okay. So your, my question for you is, um, and this, this is actually, uh, this may be like, I guess I would have to give like a a preface to this. And I, I guess I would preface it by saying that, or ask the question of saying that, do you think that truth, and this is part of the question, but do you oh, think no. that- Well, you got to ask the free, free, free speaker. No, that's the last one. You can ask that last one. We were asked- It's the fourth question. Someone. 
We get, let, I want to ask this one, and then you can ask the last one for both of us to answer. Okay. I'll ask you this one, and then the last one, the number seven, you can, we can both answer. Okay. Do you believe there is a, or uh, is there a such thing as truth? And the reason why I said I wanted to preface that is because I wanted to ask, um, do you think that truth is subjective? To the individual or to, to some, the individual's experience of it, yeah. is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. um, yes, so I do believe that, true. I do believe there is a truth. Yes, okay. there always has to be a truth. Now, whether or not each, going now to the subjective part of it, like I may see something in one way, another person may see something in another way, but there is a, a truth in it. You know what I'm saying from in that conversation, like example. Um, let's think. I mean, I didn't want to make it this large, but we think Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. right? They fundamentally d disagree and see things as true in their own light. But the one true actual thing is that we are in a democracy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and there are rules and laws. That so true. that's going to hold true. That may be that may be a really broad and big example, yeah. but like while each side in their minds see something is true, the actual truth is there. That's okay. I agree. Like there's two always two sides. There's one two sides and the truth. The truth. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is true. And I guess it would just be like, how do you like get to that truth? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you find that truth out? If two right. people, if both sides believe in something totally different, how do you come to find out what the truth actually is, right? Yeah. So you gotta be recording. Anyway. That's why you record everything. Bloop! Listen, <laughs> have your receipts ready, okay? Right. That's why you record everything. Well, not everything, but you know what I'm saying? Get people's permission, y'all. I'm not trying to get y'all sued or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you want to answer that? Uh, no, that's my thing. I believe the same thing. I believe that, uh, you know, I, I obviously I, I believe that my personal belief is that truth is subjective. Like you said, mm -hmm. there's one side, there's their side, and then there's the truth. Yeah. Um, it's just, I guess, for me, it'll be the question that will, will bother me is how do how do you come to the tr actual true. truth? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, how do you get there where both sides can be like, okay, I can agree that's what it is. Right. Because sometimes people agree to disagree. So there is, I think we mutually think that there is such thing as a truth. However, getting to that truth may not always happen. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you can ask number seven. Okay. So clearly, y'all, this is something that we planned. The other questions we didn't plan to ask each other, but this one. Right. <laughs> this, is a seg this is a segue into our final or, or the next thing that we're going to talk about. Yeah. So JB, is there a limit to free speech or should anybody be allowed to say anything they like? Um, so I do believe that there is no limit to free speech. I believe in free speech. Um, I believe that people should be able to um, say what they like. Now, with that being said, I do believe that with free speech, there can be consequences. Right. You know what I'm saying? I do believe that you know, you have to be ready for the consequences and the repercussions of anything that you say or whatever comes out of your mouth, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I truly believe in, in, in that amendment, you know, I truly believe that um, that's what kind of separates us apart from a lot of the world in America is that, you know, we have, we have that amendment, we have the, the freedom of speech to say whatever we like, but I think people need not to get confused that with free speech, uh, doesn't mean that you can say something and not face repercussions or consequences. Absolutely. And what a lot of people don't know is that the First Amendment protects us from the government to create mm -hmm. laws that prevents us from having free speech. That exactly. does not include private companies, i.e. Twitter, Facebook. They can censor whatever they want because they're private companies. Generally, I believe that they want to allow everyone to have free speech because they don't want to be in the business of constantly having to censor and take things, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But just to be clear, the, that, um, the First Amendment is not protecting you from getting your ass beat for talking to me crazy. <laughs> Or it's not even necessarily protecting you from just saying anything you want about anything. You can't make death threats to our president. You can't yeah. make death threats to anybody and not expect that somebody's going to be knocking at your door. Yeah. 
Exactly. It's just that Congress should not put any law in place that prevents free speech. Yeah. So I definitely mm-hmm. wanted to talk about that with regard to America and that uh, that amendment. Now, and also, okay. I'm sorry, I just wanted to jump in that real fast. Is that mm-hmm. also when I'm talking about the consequences and repercussions, I'm talking about potentially getting fired from a job. Right. I'm talking, I'm talking about potentially losing um, the relationship you have with a family member. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just little things like this that you know I don't think uh, we think about all the time but you know those are those are some of the consequences that happen with when you're reckless with what you're saying with your free speech so it's just all i mean for me it boils down to being respectful absolutely you know because because the second part of the question is should any uh can people say anything that they want basically should people be allowed to say anything that they'd like yes Mm -hmm. but call me the n-word with a hard er if you want to (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be like JB saying, there's gonna be consequences. And yeah, I, mean, work. I mean specifically, I mean, because that's what's going on right now, the whole Twitter thing of blocking Donald Trump and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I truly believe that they did the right thing with like banning him. But the only reason why I believe that is because there was an action that was had based upon what he said. Right. I don't believe that he should have been maybe kind of controversial here, but I don't believe that he should have been banned. People are like, Oh, he should have been banned four years ago, or he should have been banned, you know, years ago. And da, da, da. I don't believe that he should have been banned a long time ago. I feel like the real reason why I truly believe why he should have been banned or he was, I'm, I agree with him being banned from Twitter um, this time is because it was inciting something it was inciting violence. It was an insurrection on, you know, uh, the home of America, you know, the capital. But other than that, him talking about shithole countries or him talking about Mexicans or him talking about black people or anything like that, that he has said that has been so problematic. I'm like, that's his free speech that he wanted to say that. Yeah, that's what he can say. It doesn't sound nice. Well, but, it, but ra- it it doesn't sound. Oh, just one thing. It doesn't sound right, and it may be rallying up his base or rallying up, you know, uh, racist and bigots and you know certain groups in America that are against people of color and black people. But that's inciting. But, <laughs> if he's right, if he's getting them <laughs> angered up and stuff like that. My that's, thing the, that's, that's my side of the argument. He's been inciting. So I am one of those people that say he could have, he should have been muted a long time ago. Like mm-hmm. this, they waited until the white institution finally got attacked to say like, oh, now, you know what I'm saying? Like people got killed in Charles, uh, Charleston and he said people were good on both sides, making them feel like they were entitled to a to to continue to move the way that they were moving. And it's like, this is he's been doing this. He's been doing this for such a long time. This is just the icing on top. And now the repercussion is that since they've Wait a long, and I'm not going to necessarily just constantly blame the private companies because they generally don't want to be seen as censoring anyone, right? So I understand that side of it. But this is a volcano that has been brewing for the past four years that people have been speaking out against for so long. And you wait until the capital got infiltrated, lives were risked. I mean, it's not the first time lives were risked, but, you know, in the Capitol and these higher, you know, people lives were at risk. The, to me, like, it's just like, it's it's kind of irresponsible. It's a little too late, from in my opinion. Well, I mean, I think... Had, his, and one more thing, his followers at this point are mm-hmm. so fired up, there is no way to stop them. They feel so emboldened at this point because of his rhetoric, a lot on social media. Yes, he's been on the news. Yes, he's been on Fox and he's been saying stuff on there too. But for the most part, a lot of people follow him on Twitter, on Facebook and those platforms. And he has said some reckless shit like over the past four years. And they have been, it's been bubbling, 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 bubbling. And we're here and there's no turning back in my eyes. There is no turning back. 75 plus million people voted for this man. For whatever individual reasons that may be, I'm not saying they're all dumb. I, I believe they are, but I'm saying in that sense, they're not all like hillbillies, you know, in mm-hmm. the middle of America. Some of them are people that's like rich in high places that are okay with everything that's them. going on. Yeah. So 
I, 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 that is, that's my uh, side of it. Like, yes, he should have been stopped a long time ago. And yeah, it's not I, by Twitter, by his circle, but that's I, another and story. I, and I think that's what it is, is that it, it, for me personally, I mean, I've just thought about this so much and I've looked at interviews and I've talked to other people about it. And I just believe that like that is like banning him a long time ago for what he was saying would have set such a precedent that would have been dangerous because you have to think about like he hasn't yes he has said stuff and yes he is the leader of the free world or the, the free country and everything like that but he literally when you think about it he hasn't said too much different well he has said a lot of stuff but he hasn't said too much different from what people a lot of people on the left have said as well not as probably explicit or not direct or not as um as uh I guess you could say rude or, or dis disrespectful, but there have been people on the left that has have said stuff about the right that can be considered in like in, in like rallying up the their base and everything like that. Like, um, what's the I forget her. I can't think of her name right now, but she's a congresswoman. Hey, in, no, in in Los Angeles. Um, oh, uh, Maxine Waters. Yes, mm -hmm. like there was something that she had said a while ago, years ago, when she was like, "Yeah, corner them and." And make sure that you know you you know hold them accountable and block them when you see people in, when you see Trump supporters in public and you do this. It's like so would that have been considered something to like ban her account for or to get her on Twitter, get her off of Twitter for saying something like that? So it, I personally believe that everything that he has said, I agree, has been completely just you know um, irresponsible and disrespectful, and I totally don't agree with. It. I'm not making excuses for it, but I also believe that. I personally believe that we're putting too much by saying that Twitter should have taken him off based upon those things. We're putting too much power into just his words and what he has said. He has an explicitly... He's the president of, uh, like, all respect, he's the president of the United States now. He is the president like, of the United States. It would be one thing, it would be one thing if he was like putting out messages of encouragement and peace and like we're going to yeah. get through certain things as a country. But mm -hmm. he has continuously in bold and white supremacists. I, I definitely get your point. It can be a slippery, slippery slope for sure. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if it needs to be for one, it has to be for the other. I agree. I don't agree with anybody inciting violence, period. Yeah. Right? So, so that's the thing about it. In, inciting violence is I feel like, well, it is very, for me personally, I feel like it's very direct. And this is a belief system too. Speaking of the thing, it's, it's to be honest with you, it could be a slippery slope and be very, um, subjective in a sense because he hasn't directly i'm not i'm not defending him again but he hasn't directly until the last debate that he had or the second to last debate he had with joe biden when he said stand back and stand by to be me to be honest that was literally the first time where i said oh he's trying to rally up somebody he's trying to get some shit popping and then the shit happened at the Capitol. That was really the first time I had heard him say something like that, where I was just, and then some of the tweets after the fact where he was like, oh, we're not letting them go and they stole this election. So that's why I started leaning towards, oh, something needs to happen. But as far as like back in the day of the shit that he was saying about, oh, good on both sides and everything like that, JB. those can literally be taken as just opinions. And it's like, we so can't, people don't have a right to give opinions anymore about certain aspects. No, an opinion is fine. And I think we're going to have to agree to disagree because we have, as far as what we see this as, but when he told people to liberate all those states and they marched up to, to those states' capitals with militia gear on and guns, when they tried to kidnap the governor of Michigan and Virginia, you know what I'm saying? Like, did he say do that though? He told, he said liberate. And that's, they followed his lead and went up to the capital of their states to I'm with guns right. and yeah. threatened to kill people. Like, this is not like, I'm not trying to like have a kumbaya moment of like, this is like an equal thing of one versus the other. Yes, I can see how, and like, if you look at Antifa far left, how they can be troublesome. And you look at a far right, any far white supremacist group, far right, how mm -hmm. they can both incite violence. Yes, I get that. But with the president of the United States, yeah, there's a lot of the respect. president, the leader of the free world, mm -hmm. is inciting a civil war over years, and it took for this to happen, and you, we, we, we're just ignoring everything else. I think, and the last thing I'll say to this, and I think he's, it started when he said, "I can shoot somebody in the middle of." 14th Avenue, 4th Avenue, where he said, and my uh, supporters will still support me. I think that's where it started for me. 
And that's where it started to build and build and build. So and he should have just had it for saying that he should have just had his Twitter taken away automatically. He didn't say it on Twitter. He said it in in, in real time. I, I'm just saying with regard to him emboldening, emboldening, influencing his fucking following. He mm. that's where it started. Yeah, I, I totally started. believe he has said some problem. I was speaking on Twitter and specific, but I totally agree. We could definitely agree to disagree. I'm just saying specifically when it comes to Twitter. For me, it's a very slippery slope to like uh, censor or to stop someone from giving their personal opinion on a platform. Yes, I'm happy that, you know, he's taken off because what he has said that I mentioned at the debate was something that really stood out to me that was to me really one of the most direct things he has said of rallying up his base and inciting violence by saying standing back and standing by. And then once they figured out, you know, they count, they were gonna count you know, electoral college votes and everything like that, that he wasn't going to be president and Biden was going to be president. And that's when they did what they did. That was for me was like, okay, I definitely believe that he shouldn't have this platform and everything like that. But for me, I just, uh, I, I'm just worried. You already know how I feel about being PC, uh, politi being politically correct and everything like that. I believe that that's in a, and that's a whole nother conversation. But what I will say to end it is that I believe that it has something to do with it as well. It's, it's being too PC to the point that we won't allow, and not necessarily Donald Trump's situation, but we won't allow people just to, to speak their mind or to say things that they truly believe in without, again, being canceled or without being having their, can their uh, account suspended or anything like that. Yeah, we can you know say whatever we want to do, and there's a thing of freedom of speech, but how far does that really go when you know we can't really say what we want to say because you know we'll it'll be taken as inciting violence or it'll be taken as racist or it'll be taken as homophobic or it'll be taken as you know insurrection or whatever the case may be it's a slippery slope for me because it's just yeah. like okay i do i do want to hold him accountable and he should be held accountable for what he said but how where does that where does that start you know what i'm saying like where does that start where is the Bracket, not for Donald Trump. We talk about something totally. Where does that start for everybody? Because you said it could be. It can. We can both monitor both sides and everything like that. So I think, where it's, does that I think it's two. I think it's two different things, right? Like one is inciting violence, and the other is having a genuine belief or an opinion. That mm. is fine. You can have your opinion. You can have your belief. You can speak on it. We have our platform. We speak on our beliefs, and we say, you know, how we feel exactly. about certain things. Mm -hmm. But when you are riling up people. Mm -hmm. to cause destruction in certain ways, I think that's when you have to start looking at least closer into that account. Mm -hmm. And for me, like I said, on Twitter, he was telling people to liberate these states. Mm -hmm. And that was the follow-up. And at the very latest, that should have been when it was like, all right, we cutting this off right here and there. Yeah. But, that, but we, we'll move on from that. We've, we've gone on for a while right now or yeah. for, in this conversation. But uh, mm -hmm. last couple of things I want to say with regard to everything that recently happened. Um, mind you guys, we're recording this on January 13th. So we don't know what's going to happen with regard to conviction. We do know that Donald Trump was impeached for the second time for inciting violence. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you guys forgot, he was impeached the first time for working with a foreign a government to try to overtake ours um, or to belittle our democracy and take the uh, election win yeah. or whatever. I, I'm sorry. The election, tampering. Yeah, with take the election. Thank you. I've been talking for so long. I can't even talk no more. Um, I'll get used to it. <laughs> I'll get used to it. We've we been go. talking for two hours, child. It has not been no two hours. We got to, well, before, we, we, quick y'all, before we have our show, before we start recording, we have our pre-meetings. And okay. <laughs> our thing that started, you know what time that started. You see what yeah. time it is now. So that's true. Oh, so including the pre-meeting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, I could I could be going because I mean I think I'm I'm that's why I'm so happy for this platform. And then I'll, and I also have to go. I always I told you that before the episode. I have something yeah. to be so <laughs> yes, everybody. He has something where to be. So we're gonna be here to get. No, but I just appreciate these kind of, and it's the last thing I say. I appreciate having these conversations because they're important conversations. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I, wasn't I, say that, get... I wasn't wrapping up the conversation now because we have things to talk about in the agenda, but there's just so yeah. much to, to touch on. I just want to get to it. No, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, dude, just with saying that, I mm -hmm. do appreciate the conversation, like I said, because there are important things to talk about. And I'm so tired sometimes of like, you know, talking about shit that, 
doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like having these baseless conversations. So it's like with this conversation, I can, this is what stimulates me. Is yeah. this what sure stimulates me. a lot of the listeners too, for sure. Yeah, this is what stimulates so, me and motivates me by having conversations like this, you know? Right. So that's what I'm right. saying. Uh, but just back to that whole thing with uh, his impeachment and everything um, that has happened. Conviction may or may not happen. Uh, Mitch McConnell already said that he's not going to bring the Senate back for an emergency hearing. So they're not going to be back until the 19th, which is next day week. before, um, <laughs> before he's no longer president. Right. A day before. Exactly. A day before the new president sworn in. But if they do decide to, I guess, convict he will not be allowed to run for president again. I what was would not be able to hold him. office at all again. Exactly for and anything. He'll lose his pension. Yep, he'll lose him. He'll lose his million dollar um, allowance, a million dollars a year allowance to travel. Yep. So, but what's pissing me off mostly uh, with regard to the, the whole thing with the Republicans dragging their feet and stuff, mm. like Mitch McConnell specifically, and some uh, like Lindsey Graham and stuff, they're calling for peace and unity. Like, no, fuck that. We need justice and accountability. We can't swipe the, uh, you know, sweep this shit under the rug and say, okay, everyone kumbaya now, you know, no, we need everyone to unify. This is the America that has always been. Y'all are just now seeing it. So what we need now is to face this ugly demon of this country mm -hmm. and address it. I it's think that, I, think, I agree I, I with that too. I think that both could coexist. I do believe truthfully, and I'm not, not, I'm not trying to be naive in this aspect, but I do believe that we do need peace. I do believe that 75 million people that voted for Donald Trump is staggering. That's a lot of people. And I feel like this whole process, whereas I do believe that he should be impeached and held accountable, I will say that this whole process is, in a, in a sense, uh, rallying up his, his supporters as well. You know, having to watch somebody that is beloved to them and that was their president and, you know, that they looked up to be impeached another time and held accountable. They don't want to yeah. see that. Because our belief, but what our beliefs, looking at the other side, playing the devil's advocate like I haven't done in a while, but looking at the other side, they have totally different beliefs than we believe. So to have that, to have them be faced with that, I totally get how I'm not saying that we shouldn't. I totally believe that we should, but I can tell I can totally get how it wouldn't be beneficial to continue separating the country. With that being said, I do believe that he should be held accountable. So I believe that he can still be impeached, he can still be held accountable, but there should be still a bigger effort to make sure that we unify again. And that's why I believe that Biden and Kamala have been coming out with these messages of unity. Yeah, they still are for him being impeached and held accountable, but let's not forget that we wanna go back to normalcy just because we impeach Donald Trump and get him out of office and, and have him held accountable. That doesn't take away from the fact that 75 well, million people are gonna hold his, that still hold their beliefs with him. Well, let me let me clarify something, because, yes, Donald Trump needs to be held accountable. But what I was speaking to mm -hmm. specifically was with this raid with the Capitol. They yeah. all need to be held accountable. We have to show that white supremacy has no space here. We were Absolutely. built on white supremacy. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm removing Trump from the equation at this point. Mm -hmm. We need justice and account accountability, just like they hold everybody that believes in Black Lives Matter. Y'all yeah. standing ready arresting people before you know and they're just practicing peaceful protests so yeah I don't, I don't believe i'm not to cut you off i'm sorry i don't believe that those people are not going to be held accountable because it was too it was too broad it was too in our face you know everybody's seeing what happened and there i don't think that if they i personally don't believe that the government's literally just going to sweep them under the rug they're definitely i personally believe they're going to hold them accountable and, and show them as an example but for me I'm not even worried about them because they weren't the person that started the whole shit. They weren't the one, as you said, mentioned early in the in the conversation, they weren't the one that incited the uh, in violence or in that incited the insurrection or anything like that. They weren't the ones that started it off. It was their president that started it off. So if you chop off the snake at the head, he's dead. So I feel like if you do hold, yes, they're going to be held accountable because they're easy to be held accountable. They're not the president of the United States. You know, they're, yes, let's go ahead and give them 10 years. Let's go ahead and give them 11 years and, and show this. But once you actually hold the president of the United States accountable, I feel like and, and charge him and, and make him 
pay and everything like that, that is more of a statement for me personally than what they did. You know, okay. yes, it's unfortunate we lost people, people right. lost their lives and everything that's I'm super duper sad and it's an unfortunate situation. But I totally believe that before anything, I want to get held him accountable. Like I said, I want to hold him accountable and at the same time try to find some type of unity and peace in America. Like I'm not trying to continue being in a world possible. where that is possible, but like I think we're we're speaking on maybe two different things, or just looking at it in two very different ways. Probably that I am looking at the base up because the base rolls him up to get to where he's at. So regardless if we chop him out, all those white supremacists are still gonna believe what they're gonna believe, and don't be fooled to believe that they won't have somebody else come up from them that may be even more polished and more politician than he mm -hmm. is. So that's what I'm saying with regard to accountability. Like we have to hold the base accountable. We, that's like, I, I do want, I don't want a civil war. Let me be very yeah. clear. I don't want a civil <laughs> yeah. war. I don't want like everything to run amok, but we can't sit up and act like this isn't a thing happening in our country and constantly calling for peace and unity without laws and putting things into place to prevent stuff like this from happening again. And I think that's, um, maybe even on both sides, even a little bit from Biden, um, but with, with with Republicans, especially like they're calling for unity and peace without addressing what happened. Mm -hmm. There are still people in the Senate and people in the in the House that are voting against their best interests. There's Republicans voting against having metal detectors at, um, at the beginning of the Capitol. Like, yeah. Like, yes, peace and unity, absolutely. But we need some, like, some stuff yeah. to change. What yeah. I would want, my final thought on it, because I know we got to go. My final thought on it is what I would want us as American and people, and Americans and people in general um, to do and to be proactive with doing is to mm -hmm. kind of, like, just focus on the, the action at hand. So what happened at hand? focus on the the act that was done in the Capitol and everything that that, that uh, Donald Trump has done throughout his presidency, presidency, focus on that and don't focus on uh, other opinions that come out. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like a lot of times what could happen, and this is my final thought, but I feel like a lot of times is that for a lot of us, we get so much information from media news media and everything like that's literally all we're getting our information from and sometimes it leans to one side than the other so if it's leaning to one side than the other i personally feel like certain people are just people in general or not people in general but certain people can get influenced by what they see that's coming out and it can lead us to believe and try to go into one direction instead of just focusing on the action at hand and what happened would happen and trying to come up with our own belief of like what should happen and how we should move forward and everything like that. I definitely watch The View. I definitely watch CNN. I definitely watch MSNBC. And I hear people's take on what should happen and what is this and everything like that. And I can speak on it and everything like that. But at the same time, I take a step back and I say, well, what do I truly believe in? What is my belief of the situation? How do I, how did I see what took place and what do I believe should happen as a repercussion of that? So that's the only thing that I would would want from everyone to take away from the situation is to really just sit down and to take taking into account of the action, watch your show, get your information from different places and everything, but please don't follow the leader and say, okay, well, such and such was saying this and they were so, Angela Rye said that this should happen. So I, so I, I don't I, think I think her, we should, so. I, Well, I'm gonna pause you. I don't think we should shame people for, for the sources that they get their stuff from. Everybody's gonna do what they need. I'm, to, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not talking about yeah. shaming people from where they're getting their sources from. I'm talking about the beginning of the aspect. You're talking, you asked me a question on belief systems of, you know, if somebody told me something, do I automatically believe? Right. And, and I, I encourage, I encourage people so, to do, I encourage people to do their research, do yeah, more research that's all I'm saying. and create yeah. their a basis on for their mind. Um, but uh, last but not least, uh, the last thing I definitely just quickly want to touch on is I know I've seen a lot of people saying black black people, this isn't our fight. Like we should just step back and let them handle it. While yeah. I agree with that to an extent, this is our country at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So yes, let white supremacy be shown in everybody's face so everybody can see what we've been dealing with forever. However, if we do not figure out a way not to be super active, but yeah. Figure out to do a way to do something to make sure that, because at the end of the day, if they overthrow our uh, government, yeah. 
<laughs> we're going to be affected too. That's not going to happen. I, it's not going to happen. But I'm just saying hypothetically because yeah. they've been getting briefings of how these crazy groups are planning on yeah over, overthrowing the government. So I, what I will say is just stay ready. So you don't got to be ready. I say strap up. Do what you need to do. Get your license. Uh, protect yourself because they're out there chanting "fuck Black Lives Matter" at this. I don't even know what Black Lives Matter had to do with them in yeah. the Capitol, but it is very clear what they believe in their intention. So, to my Black folks, yes, this isn't our fight directly, but we do have to figure out ways to kind of maneuver through this for our own overall well-being. And that's the last thing I'll say on that. And I would say too, to, to completely for our black folks, I, I agree with you. This isn't our fight, but what I still believe I'll say it again is make sure that you do your research, get your sources. I'm, I, you know, I'm not again not trying to shame anybody from where you're getting your sources from, but please don't, you know, get your source from just one person and, and completely uh, believe in what that person or that news media aspect is telling you and run with that because people have to be open minded to that idea that you know media and 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 certain aspects of the, of our society can be leaning towards one side more than the other and will feed us information that they want us to believe in you can't be naive a lot of people can't Absolutely. be naive in that fact so i just would encourage again this is the last thing i would say i would just encourage people to get to do your research whatever you have to do to do that i'm not saying don't go watch msnbc or don't watch angela Ra. i'm not saying that but what I'm saying is that I personally believe that we should do more, take, do more and have more of an effort to get more information and then focus on what we believe from all that information and move forward. And I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. At the very least, watch Fox News. Uh, <laughs> just so you can get their side of the story, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, okay. Well, that was a, a fun informative informative up and down belief systems talking about each of our belief systems and how we view the current situation and you know i think the key takeaways is do your research um you know your belief is your belief um freedom of speech you can say what you want to say but there can be consequences <laughs> listen <laughs> and keep fighting keep that fire under biden's foot too when he gets into office it's not over because we're getting a new president they still out here y'all so Absolutely. Keep the fight. Keep anyway. The fight. This was a good conversation. Yes. 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 Absolutely. I always say that. Huh? I always say, this was a great conversation. I'm happy we discussed this. But I truly be saying that. We be going on one. So I'm, I'm yes. excited for this to be released too. Yes. We love y'all. Take care. We will see y'all next week. Yes. Um, episode three is season six. Lord have mercy. Thank y'all for rocking with us. We love y'all so much. Take care. Peace. Peace.